We've got our picture looking a heck of a lot better now. Let's go down and use some of these sliders. Clarity does make your picture look a little bit sharper, but if you look down further, we do also have a sharpening tool. Clarity does what some people call giving your photos some punch. With these sliders, it's good to kind of fool with seeing what happens if you take it all the way up, seeing what happens if you take it all the way down. And you see, when we took it all the way down, our picture got a really soft look. We took it all the way up, it got a little too crispy looking, I think. Usually with a landscape, you want to increase your clarity, but sometimes that soft look can look nice. and It doesn't look so bad with this picture, but normally you're going to want to increase your clarity. People can be an exception because a nice soft look softens up wrinkles, makes you look a little bit younger. So sometimes with pictures of people, you want to decrease the clarity a little bit. On this, I'm going to increase it some, but not a whole lot. We've got vibrance and sat saturation. Well, saturation just brings up all of your colors. You see if we bring it all the way up, our picture doesn't really look very real anymore. And if we bring it all the way down, we actually have a black and white picture because that's what a black and white picture is. We've taken out all the color. Let's double click it to reset it. And let's look at doing the same thing with vibrance. Take it all the way up. And notice with the vibrance, it got pretty unreal and bright looking, but not quite as much as it did with the saturation. Vibrance a little more subtle. And vibrance actually tends to bring up less saturated colors more than the brighter, more saturated ones. So let's bring it all the way down and notice that we don't lose all our color. We lose most of it, but not all of it. So on this, you're doing it to your taste. I don't like to get things looking really oversaturated, and I like to do it a little bit more with the vibrance and with the saturation. This is what I decided, but it's not a science. Okay, before we go down and look at saturation of individual colors, sharpening and noise reduction, I'm going to go up and show you how some of these tools in here work. This tool, I'll double click it, is a crop tool. And you can either crop your photo, like if I wanted to do an 8 by 10, I'd want to pick this ratio. And I could make it smaller if I wanted to. I could just make my picture of these flowers. When I'm done with my crop rectangle, I hit done. Well, I don't really want to crop this picture, and this is where the history comes in really well. We could do Edit Undo. We could do Control Z, which is our shortcut. But I can also just go back in here to where my vibrance was before I messed with the crop rectangle. Let me show you another thing you can do with this tool, and that is straighten your picture. Now my picture doesn't really look unstraight, and I don't really have a good line to use to straighten it with. But let's say you had a fence line in your picture, a building, and you wanted to straighten it. Or seashore, which has got a nice straight horizon. You can take this tool, you find the line, and you just draw a line along it. So I'll kind of use what I think is my horizon here. And then Lightroom will automatically straighten your picture for you. And maybe this was all right here, but I'm going to undo that too. So I'm just going to go back to my vibrant setting. The next tool in here is our spot removal tool. Click done on this. We do have a couple of issues with spots up here. I don't know whether you can see it on the computer screen. We've got a little dot there where maybe we had some dirt on our sensor. And then we've got some vignetting here. So vignetting is darkening in the corners. I don't know whether maybe my lens hood got in the way, but I've got it more in this one particular corner. So I'm going to use my spot removal tool. I'm going to click on that and notice it gives me this circular thing up here. I want my circle to be slightly bigger than my problem area was. I can either use the sliders here to change my circle size up or down. You can see it over there. I can feather it. So if I want to, which I don't need to do up here because it's a very uniform surface. So you don't want to feather something that's uniform. And I can change my opacity. So I'm going to set my opacity at 100% and bring the circle down a little bit. The other way I can bring the circle down, I'm going to hit my cat tab key, is by using my right and left bracket key. So the right bracket key brings it up. That's a shortcut I use a lot. So that's probably about the right size. Click on it and it chooses the area that it thinks will match. You can change that area by just 
clicking and dragging on your circle here. You usually want to keep it fairly close. That looks good. Now I want to change this in here. So I'm going to use my right bracket key. That'll bring it up so it's covering this area. That looks pretty good. Left click. It'll decide where it thinks works well. And again, if you want to move that around, you can. And I'll show you a preview because see how if I move it down here, it brings in the trees. So that looks about right. When I'm done with that, I can either close it over here or I can simply move on to the next tool. I think I'm still seeing a little bit of stuff up here. I find spot removal fairly difficult to work with in Lightroom. I'll try to get that again, bring it over there, see how it works with. It is something I definitely like to do in Photoshop rather than Lightroom. Close it. Okay, it's looking better, but I'd prefer to do that in Photoshop. Here's a red eye removal tool. Should be able to figure out how to use it. This is a graduated filter tool. We're not going to use that today, but at some point we will. It's nice for darkening and making our sky blue, but this is a sunset picture, so I don't really want to do that here. There's a radial filter tool which just does the same thing in a circular fashion. And then this is my favorite tool in Lightroom for making some minor adjustments. Okay, this is an adjustment brush. So let's click on it. We get our circular pattern here. And this time I do want to feather it a little bit. We can go down to the bottom. We can have two different brushes. Usually you stick with A. What I'm going to do is, and right now I'm not clicking on anything, so I'm not doing anything. I want to make this sunset stand out a little bit. So I just want to kind of take my mouse and drag along the sunset. I'm going to reset this first. So I want to make sure everything's at zero. So that looks good. My brush size looks pretty good. I want this one to feather a bit. I might want to back off on the flow a little bit. Okay, this looks pretty good. The area between the center and the inner circle is going to hit, get hit full for, force with what I do. In the outer area, it's going to feather it and be done lighter. So now what I'm going to do is just left click and drag just across this area where I've got a little bit of sunset showing. You don't really have to worry about hitting the trees and maybe a little bit extra in some of these areas. Do it a, go over it a couple times. It is cumulative. If I want to see where that's gone, I hit the O key, which shows me the mask where that's been done. And that looks good. If I wanted to add a little bit more, I could do that. Miss some over here. Hit the O key again. It takes the red off. That just lets you show where you worked on it the tab to bring that into the center again and now if I go up here and that's one thing I find on Lightroom when I'm messing with these sliders I tend to hit this stuff and move things around but it's pretty easy to fix and I could try making this a little bit warmer if I wanted to it will probably make it look yellow more yellow you can see if I slide it all the way up it does that Maybe I'll just make it a little bit warmer in that particular area. And it's just affecting that one area, not the whole picture. And I'm going to bring up my saturation just a little bit in there. And see if we brought it all the way up. Looks a little over the top. So some of you asked about how-tos on sunset pictures. When you're taking a sunset picture, I would recommend taking multiple exposures so you can kind of pick the best exposure out because sunsets can be a little tough to expose. If you have a bracketing function on your camera, I'd recommend doing that. But some of those really beautiful sunset pictures that you see, most of the work is done in the post-processing. Yeah, of course you want to find a nice sunset, but then you can accentuate those colors in the post-processing. You can see we've accentuated that kind of glow over there. We could take it way up, which I probably don't want to do. And it looks over the top. If we just bring it up a little bit, it gives us a little bit more of an orange glow in the sky. And this works really well for orange clouds or something like that to just go over and accentuate the clouds a little bit more. Right now I'm not holding down. I'm just going over my area. Or you can do the same thing with a blue sky, bring down the exposure, although I often use this graduated filter for that. And I'll show you that in another lesson. That looks pretty good. I'm going to close it. So I have it closed down here and it's going to stick on my picture. I'm getting a pretty nice looking picture right now, especially when you consider what I started out with. So let's go down and show you a couple more things. All right, we can't do curves here. If I do curves, I usually do that in Photoshop. 
you don't really need to use curves in Lightroom because what you would do with curves you're doing with these sliders up here and quite frankly that's the beauty of Lightroom is that it's really easy to use. Alright down here we've got some color sliders and what these color sliders let us do is work on the hue, saturation, or darkness and lightness, luminance of individual colors. I hardly ever work with hue but let me just show you we've got a lot of orange in here. We can make our oranges look redder and that's a look. It's kind of pretty and if you wanted to do that and give your picture a more artistic look rather than a real look that's a cool way to go. Or we could take our color out completely and make it look more yellow. Okay, I'm not going to mess with the hue. Often I want to bring up saturation in just one particular color and when I look at this I see this little bit of red back here and I'd like to maybe make that pop a little bit more. Let's just take the slider all the way up and notice how when I took that slider up it's fairly perceptible how much that red came out and because there's not really that much red in the rest of the photo it didn't really affect it that much let's take it all the way down and the sun sets more oranges and yellows they have their own slider and notice how this got pretty washed out looking so I like to make that red pop I can take that up pretty high and it looks good and it does make my photo look unreal now if I did the same thing with the orange, you notice if I take it all the way down, that really decolorizes the photo. Take it all the way up, looks pretty decent, but maybe get in a little over the top. So I've already saturated my sunset a little more. I'm going to set that back. Okay, the luminance deals with your brightness. Again, we can maybe try to make that red pop. And usually to make it pop, you want to make it look darker rather than lighter. Because if we make it light, it glows a little bit, it doesn't look real. And I don't really think I need to do anything with the red. Well, maybe a little darker looks good. But one thing that I find is when I try to bring up overall saturation and vibrance in a picture, that sometimes my greens get a little too yellow looking. And I find the best way to deal with that is not really to deal with the saturation in the greens, but to come back and take your luminance down to just make them darker and see if I take it all the way down it's a little too dark. If I take it down just a little bit it takes that bright green look out of it and I think gives it a more realistic look so I'm gonna do that with my green. Let's go down to sharpening and noise reduction. Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw have an excellent noise reduction program built into them so I always recommend doing noise reduction in, in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw rather than Photoshop. I do the noise reduction before the sharpening. Sharpening should be one of the last things you do when you process your photographs. If you shoot in JPEG, your camera engine does actually process your pictures for you to some extent. And one of the things it does is sharpen them for you. If you're not going to post-process your photos, I do recommend shooting in JPEG. But if you're going to post-process your photos, you can get more out of a raw image than you can a JPEG image. I almost always shoot my photos using the raw format in my camera. Okay, when I want to fool with sharpening in digital noise, I want to zoom in on my picture. I can either do that by hitting the Control and Command Plus. Control and Command Minus will zoom out. Or I can go up here with a 1 to 1, 3 to 1. Fill screen, fit screen. Okay, so I just want to zoom in a little bit. Control minus, I don't want that much. That looks about right. And watch what happens as I fool around with this noise reduction slider. Okay, if I put it all the way to the right, watch how muddy my picture gets. And let's zoom out now. Uh, it almost looks like it took it through Vaseline. So that's one of the problems with overusing your noise reduction is that you lose the detail in your photo. But let's dial it back and there's probably a happy medium. There is a fair amount of digital noise in here. Usually I don't go over about 30 with my digital noise. I think with this picture when I go up to the 30 mark or I'm losing too much detail. So I'm going to dial it back to about 20, between 20 and 25. It's pretty good for this photo I think. So I usually do my digital noise reduction first, and then I go in and do my sharpening. With sharpening, I usually want to go up somewhere between 40 and 100. Let's put it up to 150. Let's double-click and reset it. OK, 
Okay, I'll move my hand. And let's put it all the way up and watch what happens to the photo. Notice how it gets kind of crunchy, unreal looking. You want to avoid that and over sharpening your pictures. And what sharpening does is it gives you more contrast around your edges. So let's reset it. Let's take it up to usually about 60 is a nice place. That looks pretty good. And if we zoom out, I think we have a picture that's gotten sharper. You can just look what it looked like before and after. And it's fairly subtle, but it does make a difference. It's probably hard to see on the video. And our picture is almost done at this point. Let's go back down to another area, lens correction. Now there's a whole bunch of things you can do with the lens correction. Usually what I do is I go into this profile mode and see if my lens is in there. If your lens isn't in there, there are places to find lens profiles and download them. And you'll find sometimes, even if your lens isn't in there, that you can find a match that's close enough and makes your photo look better. With this photo, I have a little bit of vignetting, and there's a little bit of bowing on the outside. You can't see it too much, but let's enable our lens correction profile. Look for my make of my lens, which was a Sony in this case. It didn't come up with quite the right lens, but one that's pretty close. Mine's a DT 18 to 250. This came up with a DT 18 to 200. So can you use one that's not the right lens? Well, the answer is if it makes the picture look better, fine. And I'll click this and see if it's got the other one, but I know it doesn't because I've tried this before. So to just look at the difference and see whether it looks better, take it off. And notice how we're getting that little bit of distortion there. Put it on, and it's correcting for some of the distortion. So I think it looks better. Okay, you can do some of this stuff manually. And usually I'll go into the manual mode. You can see you can get a grid up there. I usually go into the manual mode if, if I've taken something at a really wide angle and I want to fool with these lines and try to correct them. In this photo, I wouldn't bother doing that. But it's good to know that, that, that it's there. And if you have... A uh, building or something that doesn't look straight, you can come in and fool with some of these sliders to try to get it to stand up straight and look more realistic. So you're correcting for distortions. Okay, the other thing you can do here is add some effects. So post crop vignetting. So vignetting we usually think is bad if the lens does it, and that's the darkening in the corners. But with this picture, if I do it just a little bit, it, it does actually kind of make the center look a little sharper and bring your eye more to the center of the picture. So maybe with this particular picture, a touch of post-crop vignetting would be good. You can take it to an extreme. And this can be nice for photographs of people. It gives you a kind of frame. You can do it in white or black. I tend to usually like black. You can change your midpoint. You can feather it more or less and see if we feather it. We just, just get it touch of it. And if I want to go back, I decide I don't like that. Go back to my history. This is the great thing about Lightroom that Adobe Camera Raw doesn't have and just go down to before I started messing with that stuff. And let's see. Do I want to put just a touch in there? Yeah, maybe my photograph looks better. All right, so that's it. I'm done with this picture. I can go back to my library and we can make our comparisons. So we've got these three pictures here. I'm going to click on my photo that I did in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to click on the one I did in Lightroom. And truthfully, any differences in between these two photos is just that we did things slightly differently in one than the other. So if I want to compare them side by side, I can do this little compare view. Let's hit my Control Shift F. I'll hit Control minus to give me the full photo. And I think that whatever I did, this is the Lightroom one, this is Adobe Camera Raw. Maybe it was that touch of post crop vignetting. Uh, this one's standing out and popping a little more to me. I like it a little bit better. This tool is really useful if we want to go through a bunch of similar pictures and pick out the best one. We can zoom in on it by just clicking to kind of see which one's sharper. Of course, these are the same picture, just processed differently. We can switch at this point. It has our selection on the left. We can switch our selection by just clicking on here. And then we can look for our next picture by just clicking this arrow. And you can see now we're comparing our before picture that is not processed with what we did in Lightroom. And isn't this amazing? I mean, this is a horrible picture. And we made it into something that's actually pretty nice. 
So one of my secrets to being a good photographer is that I always post process my work. I never post photos that I haven't gone in and at least optimized the exposure on them and sharpened them. But it's really amazing that we can take a photo as bad as this without doing anything that really changed the dynamics of the scene that we photographed and make it look like this. All right, so let's go back to our grid view. There's one more thing you need to know about Lightroom. A tab, so I've got my menus over here. These two photos are the same photo. This photo that we've done just has some extra data that makes it appear differently. That data doesn't get processed into the photo if we want to post it as a JPEG or something like that unless we export it. So once you're done with your photos in Lightroom, and you want to post them on Facebook or on Flickr, there's actually a function where you can set up your Flickr account and just move them over and I'll publish them for you. And that's how I have mine set up. But if you want to put this in the class file, you're going to need to export that photo. So we need to go up, click on the photos that we actually want to export, go to File, Export, and it'll bring up a dialog box and you can just tell it where you want it to export it to and you can give it a name. Choose something on my hard drive. Let's just put it in my documents. You can call it custom text, Lightroom photo for class assignment. Hit the export and then just go look for it in your documents folder. All right, that's it for Lightroom. In our next video, we're going to show you how to post-process the exact same photo just using Photoshop. But there's no reason why when you're done with the assignment that you can't mix and match the programs that you're using for post-process. I do most of my post-processing in Lightroom and then just come in and do a few things in Photoshop, especially if I want to remove things like in this particular photo I could have removed the wires I wouldn't want to do that in Lightroom I would do that in Photoshop let's close out Lightroom and we're done